Welcome back everyone, this is going to be my new Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon video. There's a new Comic-Con teaser trailer. George R. R. Martin was also revealing more details about the Jon Snow sequel, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. I will be doing full episodes for House of the Dragon, just like I did for the main show as soon as it premieres. And as you saw during the teaser trailer here, we will be getting a bunch more footage during their Comic-Con panel this summer. And because there have been so many Easter eggs in the House of the Dragon trailer for things that you either see or hear about during the Game of Thrones main show, I will talk about those. Speaking of familiar things, I actually just bought a replica, the Valyrian Sword Blackfire, the ancestral blade of Aegon the Conqueror, but it hasn't arrived yet, so I might just keep using Longclaw like I used in my videos for the main show. Aegon the Conqueror is the Aegon for which Jon Snow was named Aegon when he was born. Ned Stark gave him the name Jon when he took him as a baby from Lyanna Stark, and because all bastards in the North are called by the last name Snow, that's why his name was Jon Snow. In talking about House of the Dragon Easter eggs, because we're 200 years earlier in the timeline, the version of Longclaw that I used in my Game of Thrones videos for the main series was the version that the old bear gave to Jon Snow. That was different from the version of Longclaw that we'll see during House of the Dragon, because Longclaw was the ancestral Valyrian blade of House Mormont on Bear Island, so it had been passed down with each generation until it was given to the old bear, Jor Mormont, the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, when Jon Snow took the black, and when he was using it, the hilt and the pommel formed this ornate bear for the sigil of House Mormont, that's why the blade was named Longclaw after a bear claw. When he gave it to Jon Snow, he had the bear refashioned into a white dire wolf, and it was thought of as a wolf's claw like Ghost's claw. So he's still wielding Longclaw, just a little bit different from the original Longclaw. But if it wasn't clear, because bloodlines were such a huge deal for the Targaryen family, keeping their blood as pure as possible, Jon Snow is pretty much related to all the Targaryens that we'll meet during House of the Dragon, just by nature of the fact that they share Targaryen DNA. And sister wiving was a big deal within their family for a long time. We will make all the sister wiving jokes because during the trailer we actually see the remarriage of Rhaenyra Targaryen and Daemon Targaryen, her uncle. It's sort of like the converse of what you saw during the Game of Thrones main show with Daenerys being Jon Snow's aunt. It would have been like them actually getting married. And we told all kinds of jokes about this when the main show was happening, but during the events of the series, Daenerys never thinks of them being a couple or getting married as being an issue. Even before she married Khal Drogo, she had actually grown up assuming that she would marry her older brother Viserys just because that was such a common practice in their family, and they were the only two known remaining Targaryens at the time. That practice of marrying within the family isn't the only thing that led to the classic Targaryen madness, quote unquote, that you hear about when people talk about the Targaryen temper or the Mad King's actual madness. The reason why the Mad King became the Mad King, like went mad, was because of a couple events earlier in his life that predated the original show. When he was born, when he was younger, even when he took the throne, he wasn't thought of as mad. People actually thought that he had a lot of potential as a king. But like when House of the Dragon picks up, the king at the time is King Viserys I. Daenerys' older brother, Viserys, is Viserys III. In but the present day of the House of the Dragon show is meant to pick up a couple years before King Viserys Targaryen dies and before the actual Dance of the Dragons conflict. We see what looks like him being remarried during the trailer. Like it seems like he's already remarried to Alicent and she's already had a son with him. His name was actually Aegon II. There were a lot of Aegons in the Targaryen family just because Aegon the Conqueror was so famous. Jon Snow, for example, if he'd have taken the Iron Throne and actually become king, he would have been called Aegon VI. Maester Aemon's younger brother actually did take the Iron Throne and his name was Aegon. He became Aegon V. People actually called him Egg, which Maester Aemon referenced when he lay dying. There's also a prequel Game of Thrones show that they're developing about a young Aegon V called The Tales of Duncan Egg based on the novella series that George R. R. Martin wrote. But the events of that series take place way later in the timeline from when House of the Dragon takes place, and it's meant to be a completely different thing. Make all the jokes about Iron Thrones, omelets, and broken eggs, broken Aegons. But we joke about there being a lot of Aegons in the Targaryen family. During the trailer, you see Prince Daemon Targaryen, played by Matt Smith, getting remarried for the third time to the older version of Princess Rhaenyra, one of the other sides, one of the other factions in the Dance of the Dragons. They had a son later this year that they got married and they named him Aegon III. Right after Queen Alicent, just a couple years previously, had a son with the King Viserys named him Aegon II. So it sounds like Rhaenyra and Daemon on the other side of this civil war named their son Aegon as well, just out of spite. What they might do on the House of the Dragon show though is just push that pregnancy to like a later season. Because it seems like their remarriage gets depicted during the events of season one. But their son, Aegon III, was a full nine years old when the actual Dance of the Dragon Civil War started. So that just kind of gives you an idea for what the timeline is. Like, they will skip around in the timeline a lot. 
His cousin, Allison's son, Aegon II, crowned prince at the time, was about 13 years older than him in the trailer from the main show, like the Iron Throne Room, for example. But like the throne looks way different than it did during the original series, like there's these melted swords all around it. Heron Hall is probably the best example of some of the biggest changes. This is meant to be a more book accurate version of Heron Hall than we saw in the main show with all the melted stones. It's meant to be the largest castle in all of Westeros, like it's massive compared to all the other castles, but it was built during the time of Aegon the Conqueror by Heron Hor, that's why it's called Heron Hall, and when he refused to bend the knee to Aegon the Conqueror, Aegon took his three dragons, including Balerion the Black Dread, and burned Heron Hall with dragon fire. It was so hot that it melted the rock, that's why the castle looks so melty. Thereafter, everyone just looked at the castle thinking of it as a bad omen, like when people were named Lord of Harrenhal, if it was given to them as a gift or because of something great that they did, it was actually always thought of as an ill omen, like something bad is going to happen to you because this seems more like a curse than a blessing. So that's why in present day, no one really wants to be the Lord of Harrenhal. But basically what they've done with the new House of the Dragon show is because special effects, CG technology has just gotten so much better since the main Game of Thrones show started, they just used their extra money, their extra tech to show you a much more book accurate version of the castle. It's the exact same thing with the Iron Throne, although this is still a bit of a compromise and it looks more like practical effects than CG effects, but it is closer to being book accurate. On the main show, they didn't even bother with the Melted Swords. In the books, the Iron Throne was made from the Melted Swords of all the lords and the more powerful figures around the Six Kingdoms who bent the knee to Aegon the Conqueror. He melted all the swords down with Beleriand's dragon fire, and that's why it looks a little misshapen. In the book, there's this really funny thing, this rumor that goes around the realm where people talk about people getting cut by the actual Iron Throne when they sit on it. Just because it's made of pointy swords, of course you're going to get cut when you sit on it. But also there's this superstition that people who get cut by the Iron Throne, especially a lot, are not meant to sit on the throne. Joffrey, for example, terrible king, would cut himself all the time. Cersei cut herself on the Iron Throne all the time. It happens to tons of people. It's very common to cut yourself when you sit on the Iron Throne. The reason why I made the comment about the Six Kingdoms is because Dorne didn't actually get conquered till later in the timeline. So technically it was the Six Kingdoms and Dorne for a long time. It wasn't until King Darren I took the throne, and he's the direct grandson of Daemon and Rhaenyra Targaryen, almost 30 years after the events of House of the Dragon. When he took the Iron Throne, he conquered Dorne and compelled them to join the rest of the realms, and Westeros became known as the Seven Kingdoms. One of the other really big things that they wanted you to pay attention to in all the House of the Dragon trailers was the cat's paws of Valyrian Dagger being wielded by Queen Allison. Everyone remembers it from the main show. It was the Valyrian dagger that Arya used to kill the Night King. Before that, it was used in a plot orchestrated by Littlefinger to start the War of the Five Kings. It was a pretty elaborate plan, too. And we theorized that before Littlefinger came to possess it, it had belonged to Jon Snow's father, Rhaegar Targaryen, because he loved collecting things, he loved reading scrolls about the Long Night in the Citadel. They don't really give us any more information about that during this trailer. All they're trying to show us is that hundreds of years before he was born, the dagger existed and belonged to Queen Alicent. My early theory is that it was given to her by King Viserys after their wedding. Like it might have just been part of the Valyrian weapons that belonged to House Targaryen in the crown at the time, and he just gave it to Alicent as a gift. And then it just stayed in House Targaryen after the Dance of the Dragons was over. But speaking of similarities to the main show, talking about the Game of Thrones Jon Snow sequel, we just found out from George R. R. Martin that the working title is just Snow, that's what they're calling it. That's not what the actual show's name is going to be, it's just been in development for a while and that's what they've been calling it behind the scenes. But apparently, according to George R. R. Martin, it also has been in development for a couple of years now, like it's been going on for a while now, and news of it just leaked. A lot of people also believe George R. R. Martin kind of leaked the news accidentally himself during an interview that he was doing recently. But regardless, he just confirmed that it was a real thing recently. Like, yes, this is happening. We are working on a Jon Snow sequel series. I am involved with it. Probably the most surprising thing is that Martin said that the idea for the Jon Snow sequel came from Kit Harington himself, and he had brought his own showrunner when they were pitching it to HBO a couple years ago. And even though George R. R. Martin had previously said that he wasn't too keen on HBO telling stories set after the end of the official Song of Ice and Fire ending of the main series, he himself did say that he was loosely involved with all this, but it was still in development, so there's still a long ways to go before it turns into actual episodes. So if you were confused, George R. R. Martin, for the most part, is involved with all the Game of Thrones sequels, spinoffs, anything related to Game of Thrones at HBO, for the most part. It's just that he's more involved with the stuff that's actually getting turned into episodes right now, 